lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. good. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. It's Michael's birthday. It is. Yeah. I'm old now. Yeah, we're Actually, all. I was old years ago, I think. <laughs> uh, well, it only even s- older now. <laughs> it only seems to go one way. Yeah, so. <laughs> it does. I've, I've been working on that problem. Yeah. In my yeah. free time. Yeah. Well, too bad you don't have more free time, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, um, it's been all right. Uh, yeah. You know, an all right day. I was thinking we got some friends going out tonight, and I was realizing I don't have very many friends, so. Like, it's these little knots of friends, none of whom know each other. (laughs) That should be fun. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, okay, well, those two sets of people know each other, and those two sets of people know each other, and (laughs) that person's all by themselves. And so we got to get, we have a hard out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We we do have to leave at a certain time tonight. Yeah, for a hard night out, because otherwise everybody will get there and nobody will know anybody. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. We we need to get there before everybody else, at least at the same time. Strangely, I am the nucleus this time. Um, So, yeah. Should be fun. Yeah. um, So, some things have have happened. Hey, Cat, is that where you want to do that? (laughs) All right. (laughs) He looked like he had a purpose, and then he... He's been circling the table. I'm pretty sure he wants the stuff on top of the table. Oh. So. Yeah, one of the cats really likes the twist ties. Yeah. yeah. But we have to actively hide them. <laughs> right. Well, he's been circling me ever since I started unpacking the box. Like a so. shark. Yeah, right? Uh. <laughs> he even meowed at me a couple of times. Or a buzzard. <laughs> yeah. He looks more like a buzzard. Yeah, he is awful dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anyway, so there some things have have been going on, uh, like out in the world. Out in the world. Yeah. We yeah we he told me stay away from foreign policy because that's all we've talked about the last couple of episodes. But uh, there are There's, domestic things worth talking about. So okay. you know. Here yeah. we go, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, we talked a, a few months back about the Missouri versus Biden um, court case about the uh, executive branch agents um, coercing social media companies to take things down or censor particular yeah. things and, or particular people or what have you. Yeah. So um, the, uh, the lower courts found that there was sufficient evidence and we covered this at the time, the lower courts found that there was sufficient evidence um, to believe that the uh, federal government was overstepping its bounds, um, you know, uh, limited by the First Amendment related to free speech. Um, And even though they weren't actually the ones that were censoring things, that they were applying pressure and coercion in such a way that they were responsible. Yeah. Um, So then um, the the lower courts... uh, did whatever the term is called an injunction or what I don't, that's not the right term actually in this case. But, um, anyway said that the, uh, restricted the, uh, some of the agents within the federal government from, um, dealing with social media companies in particular ways. Yeah. All right. They said, you can't, you can't talk to them in this manner. Well, we're, you know, you can't ask them why so-and-so is still on their platform. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, how it's just like the mob. Man. There's a there's a vote on some regulation of your industry coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Which right. is kind of how it was going. It was like yeah. it was coercive what they were doing. Yeah. So um, anyway, uh, the, the Supreme Court has agreed to hear the case in Sweet. this year's docket. That's cool. Um, well, maybe now, sweet. I don't know. It depends on if they make the right decisions or not. <laughs> well, and there's reason to question. And yeah. um, the reason to question is because the the court put a stay on the restrictions that the lower court had applied until the court is heard by the Supreme Court, which could, you no, know, I mean, it'll may be not, at least it, a it'll year, be right? Yeah. Well, no, um, it may be as late as like next spring or summer, though. I okay. mean, we're talking like six months so sometime, away. So sometimes next year, though. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, but in the meantime, the the um, U.S. the federal government, the executive branch, can 
essentially resume its censorship activities <laughs> uh, because the the court put a stay on the so, lower courts. So how does that work? Did the court have to vote on doing that? Or yes, um, so three justices dissented. Yeah, uh, those being Alito, Thomas, and Gorsuch. Okay. Um, and they wrote up uh, the reason for their dissent, which was essentially that the lower court had show had shown um, had determined that there was enough evidence to pursue this and to uh, put the restrictions, place the restrictions on the federal government, and the federal government had not succeeded in showing that there was um, that they like, had a right to do it. Well, no, would no, be no. my guess. That, that's not really it in this case. Is it's, it okay? Um, it's they they didn't show that they. Uh, that those restrictions would inevitably cause severe harm, yeah. <laughs> essentially. Okay. Um, which is what's needed to uh, to mm-hmm. uh, to have a stay on yeah. the deci- on the lower court's decision. Um, and yeah, these three guys said that they didn't come anywhere close to showing any real need. Yeah. Um, or that there was, you know, damage, unavoidable damages if they weren't able to continue with their activities or whatever. Yeah. Um, the the other six justices that voted for it um, did not write anything up as to why. Oh well, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean that's pretty standard that they do write something up, or maybe not know. in this situation. Yeah, I don't know if it is in this situation. Honestly. Okay. So yeah. it seems to me that in a situation like this. Your go-to would be, all right, well, if the government's been doing this and the court, or the lower court's saying maybe they shouldn't be, mm-hmm. that we have them not do it until we say that it's okay, until they've proven yeah. that they should be able to. Like It right. seems like, to me, that would be the default. It should be. I mean, sh- don't you think? Like, I mean, based on the what the, the three justices that dissented wrote up, that's yeah, that, that sounds should. like exactly what it should be. Yeah. Um, so it's strange I, I that know. it's strange that that, that wasn't like yeah. you know that the other ones went the other way. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some disappointments in there. Like you expect, um, you expect several of those justices to side with the federal government. Yeah, well, there's, you know, yeah. um, you have the like, um, well, the Coney more, Barrett though, like why she would wouldn't have dissented is kind strange, of bothersome. Yeah. Um, uh, what, oh gosh, you know I'm so terrible with names. Uh, what's his name? Who's the the chief justice? Who Is it always, Thomas? I can't remember his name. It's the guy that always flips sides. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I can picture his it's face. It's not Thomas. Is it? it's Thomas, Thomas is one of the dissenters. No, it's not Thomas. That's not right. I can't think of his name. Um, but and you know, like Kavanaugh, you would be disappointed because he's a conservative justice. You would hope that he would want to limit the federal government's power. Yeah. But as we talked about at the time, like he's not that guy. He's not. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, He's, he's perfectly happy with, you know, restricting with giving the government power to, uh, for, for security and for surveillance and for, you know, he's, so he's, yeah. Yeah. We it, it's not really that, a surprise that he would go along with the the stay. Yeah. Yeah. We complained about him at the time. I remember. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the other judges really, they, you would expect them to be um, on the side of bigger government, more yeah. government influence over social media and so forth. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, for now, at least, it, I mean, you would hope that the the federal government would kind of limit their use of of being allowed to do this again of this power, with the yeah. court case coming up in the future at the Supreme Court. Like they wouldn't want to exercise it too much, yeah, for fear of of influencing the decision that comes, yeah, um, not in their favor, but, but, you know. But I but, wouldn't hold my breath that they're that. That they look that, that far that ahead, <laughs> far sighted, yeah, yeah. Like I wouldn't expect them to be. Yeah, I don't see uh, Biden as being somebody who plays the long game right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, um, you know, m- more censorship of social media looks to be our future, at least for a little while. Yeah. And then, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um. In some sense, speaking of, uh, 
the FCC has taken the opportunity with all these other distractions uh, to reintroduce the net neutrality legislation. Oh, really? Yeah. So last Friday, um, there was another hearing in there. They're pushing for net neutrality again to give the FCC a whole bunch of power um, over over the internet. Yeah. I, I mean, there's actually <laughs> like, a, it's not, it's pretty nonspecific. Um, the head of the FCC, Jessica Rosenworcel, I don't know how to say that last name. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Jessica. All right. That, that works. <laughs> Jessica said uh, that it was um, net neutrality was important for national security, so that should tell you a little bit of something about. It tells you a lot. You need to know right there. Yeah, um, that should make you immediately skeptical, I would think. But yeah. I guess it depends on what the <laughs> where, way you where, view where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the federal government. Uh, one of the issues. So, like, I I don't understand this stuff totally. So I'm actually for this portion reliant on Adam Curry on the no agenda show yeah, who went on about how it was talking about not, it wasn't talking about stopping illegal content. It was stop talking about stopping illegal protocols. Okay. Um, so the, the way the information is transferred, um, can be illegal. Oh, really? And so he, he was talking specifically that they're looking to, um, to get rid of like the Tor browser that, uh, that yeah. helps you hide your internet activity. Yeah. Um, I would say that it probably also means that they would, um, they would try and, uh, eliminate VPNs. Yeah. That do the same thing. I was going to say that's gotta be on the list if that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was thinking about like, um, Bitcoin transfers as an example, have a particular protocol. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And so they could maybe use this legislation to stop, Bitcoin transfers, yeah, um, to outlaw Bitcoin so that they can introduce their own, yeah, digital currency. <laughs> so yeah. that doesn't happen. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm a little skeptical of Bitcoin too, but I don't want it outlawed. Yeah, I'm not. Well, I'm not afraid <laughs> of Bitcoin. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm afraid of a like USDA like mm -hmm. yeah, um, digital currency that scares me. I mean, what what this legislation? I know a lot of people think. Uh, hear the the buzzword you know for the the free and open internet yeah and the the thing is that adding regulation doesn't make giving the legislative more power free. <laughs> over the internet doesn't make it more free and open it yeah. makes it less free it's and the open opposite and, of that. um and it's to me it's it's apparent you yeah. know but uh and then of course there's the the old adage that we should all understand like net neutrality is the as a name for legislation means the exact opposite doesn't yeah, it i yeah. mean i mean you the, just go <laughs> through the history of bills that's made it through and what they've done they yeah. always do the opposite of whatever the title is the inflation reduction act yeah. um the the usa freedom act yeah you know, yeah so <laughs> again like more reason to be skeptical yeah uh, um i i know that when i was looking at this years ago one of the one of the real problems was that the um, the big internet not service providers but uh, like your big um, Silicon Valley companies were writing the legislation. The yeah, and so well, it may it may not be exactly what like Mediacom or Comcast or you know one of the the big. Uh, internet service provider companies wants. Yeah. Um, it apparently is what like Google and Amazon and you know these these play. kind of players want. Yeah. So, uh, well, and the thing they would want more than anything is to keep competition out. Yes, exactly. So, I, I mean the the whole idea that you're going to improve the the market in internet service providers by regulating the market is by eliminating the freedom in the market <laughs> yeah. is on its face, just kind of absurd. I think, yeah. um, I guess you have to believe in free market economics, but you have to understand what free market economics are and not think that what we have is a free market. Yeah, exactly. I, I guess. <laughs> um, but 
there's more of a free market right now in ISPs than there would be after this legislation. And I don't think that it would actually improve things. Well, um, and there was certainly more freedom in those areas 15, 20 years ago than there is now. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, I figure there has to be because, I mean, they've only regulated it more and more over the years. Yeah. So even if it's not as, as big as what they're trying to do right now, mm-hmm. like, I mean, the, the Internet, you, we have watched the Internet become a less and less free place over the past 15 20 years. Yeah. Well, one of the things that that was a a big sticking point with this that people are, at least some people are complaining about is the idea that you can't pay for priority uh, service. Yeah. Um, So I, like I pay extra on my internet every month so that I can have higher bandwidth. Yeah. That seems reasonable. Um, But they're saying that that no, I don't understand. Do away with for that. the cons- yeah, they. I don't know. I don't understand exactly if for the consumer they would really be able to do away with that. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, the idea is that it's it's uh, free and equal. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. That it, it's it's that everybody gets the same service. It's not fair that if I can afford to have, um, you know, three hundred megabit a second downloads. Uh, but my neighbor can't afford it and he only gets 10 megabit a second downloads. Okay. That's just not fair. And so we should all have the same thing. So, now, so it's th- like socialism then. We all have to be equally poor. Of course. Well, ex- that's exactly how it would work out. It would mean <laughs> yeah. that you would go down to the lowest common denominator. Exactly. Um, but the other side of that is that uh, increasingly you're getting um, some industries that make use of uh, the internet um, to do things remotely that are really important. Yeah. Um, like in the medical field, you're seeing more like doing surgeries remotely. Oh, wow. You know, which of course the, the, you know, the protocols are passed back and forth over the internet. You don't want to give your surgeon priority. (laughs) If there's limited bandwidth, you want, you want everybody to have an equal chance of like their surgeon (laughs) have an equal chance of having his service dropped in the middle of, I mean, yeah. Can you imagine that disaster? Oh, no. uh, he died because we didn't know what to do next because the internet went. Well, out. no, I mean it would be. They're actually like remotely performing surgeries oh, like, at this point. Yeah, wow. like manipulating like computer, instruments and stuff. Yeah, like, or like robot type. Yeah, deal. exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So, so then you just kind of have to stop in the middle because the connection died. I guess like so. that would be that would be a catastrophe. Now, one of the examples that they keep giving is that there was some uh, fire company out west that was fighting a forest fire and they um they had their uh their internet dropped by the internet company because they weren't paying or whatever i don't remember exactly what the story that they tell is the the truth is um that the uh this fire company had used up all of its it's allowed uh, uh, yeah. what it was allowed yeah. yeah um for the month and but it was quickly negotiated and turned back on. I mean, yeah. probably there wasn't some guy at the switch going up. Oh, well, this fire company, they're about to run out of their data for the month. I'm turning it off. I mean, it's yeah. probably all automated. It's all automated. Yeah. There's not a guy that flips a switch in the back room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're almost there. Time yeah. to flip that switch. And frankly, I blame the fire company. Shouldn't there have been somebody on the other end of that going, um, Hey, we're, we're, cl- we're closing in on our data limit and we really need this to keep going. Well, I know at least for, my personal experience like i get a notification when i start hitting my limits yeah like and it's usually a fair amount before i i'm close to it like i get that first warning i'm like all right here it comes yeah you know? i think my first warning <laughs> is like you've used 75 percent of your data yeah, for in fact that's exactly what mine yeah. is yeah yep so uh, i don't know maybe maybe they, didn't. maybe they thought they could make it <laughs> yeah, maybe they weren't checking that email uh, maybe yeah <laughs> you know maybe that was one of those junk emails <laughs> right so. it went to the spam folder right. so <laughs> So uh, anyway, that that story is not entirely true. Yeah, um, is the point. Uh, but what they're looking for is the ability to regulate the internet. And if you think about what the internet really is, um, the internet is just uh, is a platform to exchange information. Yeah. That's all it really is. Yeah. Uh, and so they're looking for the ability to regulate the exchange of information. Yeah. And information has always been power. And yeah. so you really, like, 
you don't want the government to have this ability. The The best thing for the internet is for government to, to keep government out of it, for it to be something separate, decentralized, and uncontrolled. And there's there's bad sides to that too, obviously. I mean, well, like I understand perfect. concerns about, um, you know, uh, the, the dark web and um, um, human trafficking and, you know, those kind of things. Those are problems. Yeah. But the... Mm. They're not solved by taking everybody's freedom away. Well, that's what, absolutely what, true. What I would yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they probably wouldn't be solved in this case anyway, well, but they, there would they be far be. more harm than good anyway. Yeah. Um, because now you're, you're given the, in, in order to do the things that they want to be able to do through this net neutrality, they would have to be looking at all the information that's being transferred around. Yeah. And uh, say there's just some things that they don't like. Which there will be, you know, like a like a story about Hunter Biden's laptop as an example. Yeah, that's a prime example. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is something to keep an eye on, and that we should definitely push back against. Oh, absolutely. Now the um, the good news is that they have a, a Section two thirty problem. Um, so the chances are that this would be challenged, and at least with the Supreme Court as it exists right now. Um, if they follow previous, if they follow their own precedent, they would say that the uh, the power that the FCC is trying to take was not explicitly given to them by the uh, legislation that created them, and so therefore they can't have that power. Yeah. Well, they'd have to go back to Congress, right? Right. Yeah. Um, Which and have that power given to them given explicitly. To them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And but. And thankfully, the odds of that getting through Congress, at least as it sits right now, mm -hmm. would be low. Yeah. I would have to think. Like, I don't I, really know. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know. Uh, the Congress has me more worried in this regard than the, than Supreme, the Supreme Court, Court yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, yeah. we'll have to see. I mean, hopefully it just doesn't ever come up. Get to that point. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but it took uh, it took Donald Trump. This is one of the best things Donald Trump did was go in there and end the the net neutrality thing. And the, yeah. the truth is that it hasn't affected much. Yeah. I, I mean, no. there's been very little impact. Um, and I would say most of the impact uh, from the um, ending the net neutrality regulation that was out there has been positive. Yeah. Like restore the market a little bit. Yeah. But I'm sure there are some people that can't afford better internet that think that that hasn't gone well for them. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, do people think that this is going to just give them free internet? Like, I don't... Oh, probably. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's... <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably a belief out there. I mean, that's certainly the way they're playing it is they're like, uh, you know, low-cost, high-speed internet for everybody. Yeah, because I've heard that talked about on the mainstream media. And I, that's like... I guess that is kind of how they're trying to sell this and pitch it. Yeah. And they're also, they're doing it by um, referring back to the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, well, the pandemic proved to us that we really need this. That this is and, a, a necessary utility. Yeah. yeah and the reason that. they're saying that is, I, I assume that what they're referring to is um, the online schooling that went on during the pandemic. So yeah. think about that for a moment too. What they're doing is they're setting you up to make it easier to lock you in your home to, next time. To do this again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's exactly where my mind's when every time I've heard it, it's like, oh, so they do want to lock us up again. <laughs> Definitely. So. Um, in other news, yeah, uh, we have a new speaker of the house. Yeah, I, um, so I don't know a lot about this guy. What's his name? Mike. Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. I thought it was Mike Johnson. I had a boss named Mike Johnson. That's the reason that I was. I, I thought it might be wrong. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, he's Louisiana um, representative. Uh, I guess he's been there for like six years or so. Okay. So he's been reelected a couple of times. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell, like looking at the media, what he's really like. Cause I hadn't heard of him before either. Yeah. He's... Um, and I tried to read up on the guy, um, uh, as best I could. Uh, and he, you know, according to the media, he's, um, far right or, you know, I, I, but it seems to me that according to the media, um, 
anybody that's right of like I mean, Nancy Pelosi. I was fixed to say, right. like Green Greg, what is it? Ah. What is his name? The Greenwald guy. Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald's far right if you listen to the mainstream yeah, yeah, media. Exactly. And like that guy's a left winger, so definitely. Um, I mean, you really can't put a whole lot into the to their assessments. In past times you would have called him progressive even. Yeah. Um left wing progressive. And like Matt Taibbi definitely is, but he's a right winger according to the media now too, because exactly. he just didn't go along with the program. Exactly. Um uh, yeah, so, well, un- until you're out of power, because remember now, George George W. Bush, Bush the Younger, is one of the greatest presidents we've ever had oh, now. That's, that's right, yeah, uh, exactly. Um, when he was in office, he was terrible. He was, and, yeah, like, he was. You the, know, the crazy world. right-wing nut job. Yeah. Um, now he's one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. Yeah, um, and, and th- you know the reason for that. The reason for that is because he was a warmonger. Like he was, mm-hmm. he was a neocon, and that's the reason that that side of the political spectrum has embraced him so much. Yeah, which that side of the political spectrum is most of the political spectrum, actually. Like it is, you know, yeah. You, well, you yeah, talk it's both sides a, of the aisle. Yeah, you can talk about an even split between um, Democrats and Republicans, but the War Party is about ninety percent. Yeah, uh, of the representatives and senators, which, so. by the way, is amazing because that is not representative of where the country is at. Yeah, and it, it has never been, except for maybe after nine eleven. There was mm-hmm. a lot of after nine eleven, the country was kind of in that camp. Yeah, but we're far past that as a country Finally now. Finally, broke the Vietnam syndrome. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um. So, uh, so yeah, he's from what I can tell, though. Like my real concern about him. Um, is that they have a speaker? Well, there's that because nothing, <laughs> nothing good can come of this. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly where my mind went. <laughs> um, but he's, it, it does seem to be that he's a representative of the religious right. Oh, okay. Um, and his, his first act as speaker was to pass a resolution, uh, backing Israel. By the way, yeah. Thomas Massey was the only Republican that voted against it. Really? Um, he said that the language is so broad as it could it could be interpreted as um, we would commit troops to uh, the war in Gaza. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's why he said he voted against it. But anyway, uh, I don't I don't have. I don't have problems, obviously, with people being religious or whatever. Like, he can be a Zionist, even. Like, he can be a Christian Zionist if he wants. I don't really care. Um, I do have a problem with people that I perceive to be a zealot. Yeah. um, Or a fanatic. um, Really, of any kind. And I can't entirely trust the media on this, uh, of course, but from what I can tell, he qualifies. And that frightens me yeah so um and i i'm surprised that he was accepted in this but i guess that they're just tired of not having a speaker and they want to start doing terrible things for us so i'm assuming because i don't know i didn't look into it that he he won with just republican votes and that this wasn't some kind of bipartisan effort i don't know what the split is and it seems like i would have heard if it was a bipartisan that that you know because they they had yeah. floated that out at one point of trying to mm-hmm. get some enough democrats on board to to push somebody across yeah i but know it doesn't it sound like vote. this guy would have been the guy that would have, they would have done that with no probably not um it was a close vote uh i don't i i didn't write down the numbers so i don't yeah. remember um, yeah and i and even if i had actually i don't know what the split is at this I point i don't know in, what the, in the split house is of res- representatives so i, I wouldn't yeah. be able to tell you I got you. Um, but anyway, he's there now. So they, like I said, <laughs> they can start doing terrible things for us again. Yep. Absolutely. Like funding wars. <laughs> all um, of the wars. <laughs> we have to fund all of the wars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of Massey, though, um, he has led a letter um, in Congress to go to the DOJ pushing to drop charges against Julian Assange. It kind oh, of really? coincides with the uh, Australian Prime Minister visit. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. I, I mean, like yeah. the letters. I mean, I don't know. How, I'm not yeah. saying that the that charges they're doing being dropped yeah, yeah. will happen, but but there but is there's a, push. a there's an effort out there's there. There's a bipartisan push to yeah to get this done. So no, that's cool. You know, we'll we'll yeah. keep up with that. Yeah. And 
you know, keep our fingers crossed that that actually goes somewhere, but I, I would be surprised. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, the last thing it, it, we can talk about foreign policy now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, all, all I was saying is we've been pretty heavy the last two podcasts yeah. and we need to balance it. Um, well, it looks like, uh, they're asking for considerably less than the 160 billion that we said that they might ask for. And they're only asking for like 105 billion. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that's a- to fund wars all over. All over. That's the yeah. that's the all the wars. This is bill. for um, Ukraine mostly. It's like sixty five billion is Ukraine. Yeah. Um, it's like fourteen billion, I believe, for Israel, yeah. um, and then the rest is for uh, East Asia. Yeah. Which is propping up a bunch of little, um, a bunch of little nations that can help us against China potentially for that war that they're playing. They've been planning for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, which is also terrifying. I was talking with somebody today and the, the thing with taxes came up. I don't mm -hmm. remember exactly what we were discussing with taxes, Mm -hmm. but, um, this person was like, yeah, cause I had made the comment that, um, I was like, you know, I mean, it's not like they we need to pay taxes. They can just print the money anyway. Yeah. And well, and this person goes, yeah, but but if they do that, then that'll cause inflation. I was like, yeah, but it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, like, they're still printing money. They're <laughs> still printing the money. And that's kind of the point that I was just going to make here is mm-hmm. like, do we not really think that all this money we're printing to send to, you know, all of these countries is going to cause more inflation? Like, yeah. Because we don't just have that money sitting around. It's not like it's just there, you know. We've got to, it's, it's got to come from somewhere. Uh, it's not coming from the taxpayers. It's being printed, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. just something to think about as we're trying, as the house now has a speaker again and is starting to spend money again. <laughs> well, the, the other thing with the China bit is that it's pretty provocative to China for us to, um, funnel a bunch of money over there in opposition to them uh, in a, in the same package where we're funding two active hot wars. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so wow. um, there, that, there's a message there. Oh, yeah, there absolutely is. Yeah. Um, intended or not, and I think it probably is. I think it is. Yeah. It was received whether it was intended <laughs> or not. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess finally just a little bit more on the Israel, um, Palestine thing. Um, so where are we at with that? Have they actually sent a large amount of troops into Gaza yet? No. Or? Um, they have agreed to a delay so that the U S can, um, send air defenses to its military bases all over the middle East because they, we know that our bases will be attacked when Israel moves into Gaza. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I never even thought about that, but that's absolutely right. Um, U.S. bases are already being attacked are they? Um, throughout yeah. the Middle East. Um, there's been a few injuries, no deaths so far. Yeah. But uh, but Israel hadn't went in yet either. Though. No, that's So this is right. only the buildup, you know. And by the way, Israel has been um, constantly uh, bombing the airports and the two major airports in Syria. Oh, really? Uh but they've been doing that all year long. It's not like oh, it's yeah. it's new exactly, new, yeah. but they usually only um, put one airport out of commission at a time. Yeah. And since the October 7th, they have frequently been bombing both airports. Really? Yeah. Um, now, like I said, this isn't unusual. Uh, Syria doesn't respond. I was going to say, they just take that? Yeah. Um, so far, but... <laughs> it may get old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Well, especially if With now this, they're if if there's a, if they're stepping it up. Yeah, if there's a an uprising throughout the Middle East about this, then I don't think Syria will just sit there. Yeah. I mean, as it is, Syria is the inferior military power, obviously, to Israel. Well, yeah. Um, but if if Israel provokes enough of a reaction throughout the Arab world, yeah, then you know Persia might jump in there too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, we'll, well, just, it, it, we'll just it's one of those see. things when when once one person jumps, everybody starts jumping. 
you know. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we we got a little insight into some of the, I guess, some of the talking points the other night. <laughs> Um, yeah. and there was some of these things that I wanted to reply to. And I, uh, so one of the things is that I understand why people would be upset if I was comparing January 6th to what happened on October 7th. Like, okay. um, so let me try and explain, which I, I guess I didn't do a good enough job at the time. Um, first I was pointing out the absurdity of how, um, how at least the left wing in this country has reacted to January 6th. Yeah. That it was this terrible, awful event that was worse than nine 11 and worse than Pearl Harbor or whatever. Like I, I was trying to point out the absurdity of that. Yeah. Um, which like is, I think really seen, was the point of the comment. Yeah. Was the, now yeah. that you've seen a real atrocity, what do you really think about yeah. January 6th? But the other part of that was serious, which is that, um, the difference, like the other comparison that I was trying to make was that this was an, this was an internal revolt yeah. in Israel. Yeah. Um, they weren't being attacked by a foreign nation. They were being attacked by people that live within their borders. Yeah. Um, or at least the borders that they claim. Yeah. Like people that are under their control. Yeah. And so that, that was the other comparison that I was trying to make. I, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a comparison of scale well, <laughs> in any way. And just to kind of, so, the media routinely compared it to nine um nine eleven. Yes. Like compared January sixth to nine eleven. Mm-hmm. Like that was so I mean there to me, even that is no comparison. Mm-hmm. Like I mean nine eleven was was miles worse than than January sixth. Oh yeah. So <laughs> so I don't understand like why like why can that comparison be made but not the other, mm-hmm. I guess would be my my thing. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, yeah. I can't explain that. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know. So, but one of the other things that I was, uh, I was a little surprised at was, uh, again, hearing this idea that, um, that Hamas is the, the Gazan government and therefore the citizens are responsible because they elected them. Besides the fact, the the things that we've already talked about, that there hasn't been an election there since 2006. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I specified when we were talking about that before, but it was a parliamentary system, and um, Hamas didn't even get more than half of the seats. They only got like 43% of the seats in that election, but it was the highest, they were the biggest party. They were the biggest one, yeah. Yeah, so they, they had a, a <laughs> plurality, but not a majority. Yeah. Um, and the next party had something like 41% of the seats. So it was close. It's not even yeah. like they yeah. ran away with it or anything. Um, they took over after Israel withdrew and um, instituted the complete blockade of Gaza. Yeah. Uh, which happened after that election. Um, but I, I caution people before you start holding citizens morally responsible for the actions of their government period. Yeah, cause because look at the government we live under. Yeah. Back up and think about some of the things that our government has done. Um, it was it was just in the Clinton years when Madeleine Albright sat there on 60 Minutes, and I should have prepped this clip, actually. Um, sat there on 60 Minutes, and when asked about uh, our um, embargoes in Iraq being responsible for the deaths of up to half a million Iraqi children, and how did she feel about that, she said... We think it's worth the price. Yeah. Good. Now, man, man. do you want to be held responsible yeah. um, for the actions of the Clinton government that was responsible for the deaths of up to half a million Iraqi children? Yeah. All right. So then let's move on to the terror war because this is a better one because you could say, well, I didn't vote for Clinton. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but let's move on to the terror wars. Um, the U S government or the U S military, however you want to look at it, the U S government is responsible for the deaths of something like 4 million people during the course of the terror wars, yeah. um, and responsible for, uh, 35 to 40 million refugees. <sighs> all right. Insane. Do you want to be held morally responsible for all that? Because yeah. I, I'm certain that unless you didn't vote at all, you voted for either Bush or Obama. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't, but <laughs> well, I <laughs> but mean, your average citizen. Yeah, 
Yeah. The vast majority of people voted for one of the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or supported at the very least one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you even the half of people that are re- eligible to vote that don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, probably had picked a side at, at any rate. Yeah. Um, you know, like holding the the Palestinians responsible for the actions of Hamas is like. It's like a, uh, it's like ha- holding the citizens of a mafia-controlled neighborhood responsible right. for the actions of the mafia. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's all well and good to think that, well, you know, and to say that they, well, they haven't done anything to stop it. Yeah. All right. Well, like the average citizen, you think is going to stand up to the mafia? Yeah. No. And do <laughs> what exactly? <laughs> like they're just trying to live from day to day. Yeah. Like well, they don't want to get involved. I mean, I would like for people to stand up against their governments a lot more too. Yeah. But to expect somebody to to put themselves and their family at risk. Yeah. Um to to do that in in what's essentially a lost cause. I mean, it's not like they're going to actually be able to stop it anyway yeah. unless it happened on mass. And we don't see that in mafia neighborhoods and I don't think we're going to see it in Gaza either. Yeah. No. Most of those people just have more important things to worry about, like feeding their kids. I was going to say survival. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think that that's a fair argument to make that yeah. either that they voted for him or that they're responsible for their government's actions, or if they don't stand up against their government, then they're responsible for those actions. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just don't think that it follows now. Like what has happened here is awful on both sides. Oh, absolutely. Um, it is completely unjustifiable for Hamas to kill Israeli children, slitting their throats with a knife yeah. or whatever. Um, it is also completely unjustifiable for the Israeli government to kill Palestinian, Palestinian children, even if they're dropping bombs. Like, there's no difference. There's no moral difference in the death of a child by a knife and death of a child by a bomb. It's like they're both responsible. Yeah. Like, um, and it's just as bad. And even if Israel gives a warning before <laughs> yeah. they drop the bomb, because yeah. first off, those people have nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, you've limited f- fuel, food, water, etc. Like, how are they supposed to leave? Yeah. Um, all the borders are closed, etc. Which that's, by the way, is just bad enough. The idea mm-hmm. that we're just going to cut off utilities to this area, mm-hmm. like that's punishment enough. Yeah, like, I mean, people. I mean, just think if yeah, like we're arguing in this country that um, that everybody should have internet, internet. Yeah, and we're okay with Israel cutting off water to yeah. Gaza. Yeah, I mean, just think if somebody lo- you live here in the subdivision you mm-hmm. live in, and if people if like they blockaded you in and was like, we're cutting off the utilities. Figure it out. Yeah, like <laughs> I mean, how well do you know your neighbor? Like. Well, the, the warning thing is just silly to me, too. It, like, going go to another mafia example. Yeah. It's like when you don't pay your loan, and that loan shark comes out and breaks your your legs. Yeah. Like, well, he did tell you that that's what was going to happen if you didn't pay your loan. Yeah. So yeah. that makes it okay? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so. Absolutely. By the way, you should pay your loans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, this... Um, there's a weird kind of uh, of rationalization and justification that's going on in this that I, I don't think is appropriate. Yeah. Um, and it's on both sides. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's bad for both sides. Um, the This is bad PR. Like, what Hamas did is not, does not um, endear them to yeah. the rest of the world. And yeah. what Israel is doing now does not endear them to the rest of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Like this, you know, the the thing that needs to happen is a ceasefire. All right, like you you've you've responded. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not like I didn't expect Israel to do anything, but they've done a whole lot more than nothing at this point. Yeah. I, I mean, the last estimates I heard was something like sixty five hundred Palestinian civilians killed, uh, twenty five hundred of them children. Yeah. And there were about 1,500 Israelis that were killed in the uh, October 7th yeah. um, attacks. Like, you've responded. Yeah. It's been more than tit for tat. Yeah. yeah. Like, neither of you did good things, but 
like at what point do you stop? And yeah. the only way that this ends is through negotiation or genocide. But I don't think the world's going to allow that. No, no, there's uh, that that will not be allowed. And so even even as much as the U.S. backs Israel, mm -hmm. I don't think that the rest of the world is going to allow that to happen. Yeah. Even no matter how many carrier groups we put out there. <laughs> well, the um, so over the last few years, just like one more point I, I is that the the Palestinians have, were painted into a corner um, in a lot of ways. And yeah. again, this is not to justify the the massacre, the atrocity that they that Hamas committed on October seventh, um, but between the the Abraham Accords that the U.S. Uh, negotiated under Trump, um, these normalization deals between Israel and other Arab nations that the the Biden administration has pursued, um, these things were trying to sidestep the Palestinian question, to ignore the Palestinian question. Yeah. Um, now, it's funny that I can even say Palestinian question and get away with that because I can't get away with saying the Jewish question, right? Like, that that's that's a no-no <laughs> phrase. Yeah. So, but, you know, they're, they're trying to sidestep the Palestinian question about what to do with these people. Yeah. Um, and while the Hamas attack cannot be justified, we may not be talking about the Palestinians at all if they hadn't done that. Oh, we wouldn't be. You could, there's no question about that. So at some point, I mean, like if you see, it goes back to the existential threat thing. Like if you see like the end of your people in the future, yeah. if nothing changes and you can't get anybody's attention, like yeah. how far will you go to get attention? Yeah. They have attention now. It's not the best attention, but no, yeah. um, but that's shifting because of the Israeli response, and yeah. and that is you know Scott Horton talks about this a lot. Like that is the the value of a terrorist attack. It's not in the action; it's in the reaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you force a reaction, and the reaction is where the power comes from. Yeah. So um, I don't know. It's just some things to keep in mind, like. Everybody's in the wrong at this point. And the you like I said on the very first podcast where we were talking about this, like I don't know where this ends, but I know that it cannot end until the violence stops. So the yeah. first thing that has to happen is a ceasefire. Yeah. yeah. And it has to happen now, sooner rather than later. Because you know in the end it ends at the negotiating table anyway. Yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well get there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's let's skip all the killing and get to that part. Yes. Right. Which is the same thing that we said about Ukraine at the beginning too. Yeah. And yeah. it still holds. Yeah. yeah. Like you know this thing we, doesn't we, end we except at the negotiating this. table. Yeah. So just get there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um yeah, yeah. pray for peace, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I that's good. We got to wrap up like I don't know. I've seen your phone blowing up. Mine is too. Dude, so. my phone is going off over here. And we got to do our little bit of editing and get this uploaded. And I already know that I'm having trouble with my internet. So this is going to be fun. Um, All righty. Yeah. So uh, as usual, uh, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like, and share, comment, subscribe. Um, iTunes, particularly the, uh, reviews and ranks and reviews help out quite a bit. Um, and YouTube, same thing. Those, that little up thumbs up thing. <laughs> People can't see your thumb, but it's up. <laughs> yeah. The thumbs up thing. People know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and comments like engagement just helps, uh, oh, yeah. the algorithm find us again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Since it's been pushed down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see, I'm leaving them on, but everything, we're, we're good for next week as far as I know. As far as I know, yeah. So, um, we expect to be back next week, and in the meantime, uh, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.